So hello everybody, how are you today? It is Friday, so it's time for another DAX Friday. It's a new DAX function every single Friday. Okay, in today's DAX Fridays, I'm not going to show you one or two, but three DAX functions. And uh, to exemplify those functions the best way possible, I actually look around on the internet for cool examples and I found Excel magic trick. 885 from Excel is fun. <laughs> Yay. Okay. So this is a really cool example. He does it in Excel. I'm going to put a link down below so you will be able to see how this is done in Excel. But uh, I'm going to do this in Power BI. And with this, we're going to introduce a bunch of new functions and use other functions that I've already explained in DAX Friday. So you'll see. Um, this is the what he does in the video. I think it's a very useful example. So this is a company <coughs> and they want to know um, how late their employees are in the morning. They have to come at 8 a.m. and they clock in every morning. So they want to know, okay, how late they were. And they have a $2 penalty for every 15 minute period they are late, except for the first 15. So as you can see in here, 8.14 is not late, 8.15 is not late, 16 it is. And then there will be discount $2 from their payroll. Ouch. So <laughs> this is what we're going to do in Power BI. It's a little bit different as what it, how it's done in Excel. If you're not using Power BI, but always, obviously, the, the normal Excel. And uh, I'm going to show you how and introduce some new cool functions. Are you ready? Let's go into Power BI. Okay, I have used the exact same example so you can follow along on both videos. So here we have a table. We have the employee ID, the name, the, the, the date, not the name, the date and the time they clocked in. Now, the first thing we want to know is how many minutes were they late? Okay, so I'm going to do this step by step. So I'm going to use a few, a bunch of measures, but you could put this in one at the end if you want to. Okay. It's just so you can follow along as how this is done. So to calculate how many minutes this, the employees were late, uh, we need to subtract the start time. They should be in at eight o'clock with the actual clock time. Okay. And the, uh, we're going to use the div to, to calculate the difference between those the, um, those times and to get the value in minutes. Uh, I don't have in this table the clock, you know, the time they should come in, 8 o'clock. If you have it, you can use it, but I don't have it and I don't want to write it because I don't need it. You can hard code it. If you have different times for different employees, then you probably you need to have it on a table, but in this case, we don't. So we're going to create a new measure. And we're going to calculate how many minutes they were late. And we're going to use date diff. I already have a video on that date diff on Dax Friday series. So link down below, go and check it out. So we have date diff, and then now we need to have eight o'clock. So how do we write time if we don't have it on the table? You just use a function called time. I also have a video on that. Link down below. So eight zero zero. So this is going to create the eight time that, that we need. And then we're going to subtract eight o'clock from the actual clock time. So we need to do a sum of int time. You cannot put raw columns on measures. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I have a video for beginners in DAX. I'm going to link down below. Go and check that out, okay? But you can just put table in time without an aggregator. So we have the time they're supposed to come in, the clock time, and we want to have the results in minutes. So you just put minute. They, this is such a versatile function. It's wonderful. So now that we have this in, put it in there. And we know that employee 010 is 14 minutes late, 15, 16, 13, 30, 31. Now, this employee 101 is not late and not this, this one because the first 15 minutes they are allowed to be late. So they are not late basically, <laughs> but these employees are late. Okay. So now what, what we want to know is how many 15 periods these employees are late. 
Okay, so if we divide this by 15, how many buckets do we have? Because we need to charge them $2 per bucket. So we're going to create a new measure. Again, you can do this all of this in one, but just so you follow along. So this is, uh, let's call it 15 minutes intervals. And this is going to be, and this is where a new function can be introduced. But before we do that, let's put divide because we need to divide minutes by 15 minute period. Okay. If we do that, we're going to get a decimal. Obviously you can go in here and then you can say, okay, this is not a decimal, but we do, the only thing we want to have is the integral part of the number. So I gave it away, right? You can put int in there and that will give us just the, the part without the decimals, basically. And that's exactly what we need. So this is zero 15 minutes interval. This is one, this is one, this is two, this is two, and so on. So now, if you don't want to use int divide, there is actually a function that does this, and it is called uh, quotient. That's exactly the same thing. It divides two things and then it gives you only the integral part. Now, here's the thing with quotient and it is, let me see here. It is, says numerate to the denominator and it returns only the integral portion. So the part to the left of the comma or the point. And it says, if the argument is not numeric, you get a value. And if it's, um, It's a zero, it returns an error. So if you are dividing this by zero, it returns an error, which is horrible experience. So for that reason only, I wouldn't use quotients. Now, in this case, you probably will not get divided by zero, but you know how data is. Somehow, somewhere, a zero shows up and then you get an error. So I would probably use divided int instead. But now you know that this exist in case you need them in a place that you know that there will be no zeros no matter what. So now we have, look at this, you have, we have 0, 15, 0, 1, 1. So this is one minute interval and then you can say, oh, now you remember it's a $2 fine for every one 15 minute period they are late. So you will say, oh, we need to charge $2, $2, $4 and so on. But 8.15 is not late. It's not, right? So the first 15 minutes, they can actually come in and it's not late. And then you can say, oh, more or less, like, no, let's do it. It's not late. So we cannot charge this person $2 and we cannot charge this person $4. They should have this zero and this two. So how do we do it? We need to identify which of these time steps are 15, 30, 45, or zero? So we don't add a period of 15 when we shouldn't. So how do we do that? So the first thing we need to do is to extract the minute out of the time. So we need to know which one is 14, 15, 16, 30. We need to have this, um, uh, these uh, minute values, okay? And there is a function called minute, but it requires a daytime column in order to do that. So this will extract the minute from a daytime, but we need to have a daytime. I don't have daytime on my um, on my table. I have date and I have time. And then you can say, Ruth, you can go to Power Query and create a daytime, or you can create a daytime here. Daytimes are memory or performance thieves. Okay, you should not, or you should try to avoid the daytime as much as you can. So, is there a way to get this time column into daytime format? So, I start to search on the internet and guess what I found? Introducing. So, how do we call this? Uh, is 15 minutes interval measure. We're going to build this as we go along. So time value 
converts time into daytime formats. Like, that's exactly what I mean. But it says text. I need to have text. If I put in time there, it, it won't. It, it, it just it doesn't let you pick a column. So if I put the sum of and we add it in there, guess what? We got a date time. So now that we have a measure that has time as date time, we can use the minute function to convert these or to extract the minutes out of the time. So the only thing we need to go to do is go in here and we write minute. And that's all we need is minute and date time. You see it here. And that will convert the um, time column and extract just a minute. So you can see here, 14 minutes, 50. this is going to be the same, but if you look at here, this is zero, which it should be 57 and eight. So it's ignoring the hours and distracting the minutes, which is what we needed. Okay, so now we managed to extract the minute part of the time column. And as you look at the numbers, if this is 15 or 30, 45 or zero, if we divide it by 15, it will give us decimal zero. Let me show you. If we divide this by 15, and instead of whole number, we put this as a decimal number, so we can see the decimals. You'll see that when this is 15 or 30 or 45 or 00, zero we get zero decimals. You see, zero, zero, zero. So we want to extract from that division the decimal part, so we just get the zeros. And to do that, there is a function called mod. I'm going to remove these that will extract the decimal part of a division. And as you can see here, what is 15 or 30 or 45 or 00, zero you give us 000. zero zero. Cool, right? Now, this is what he does. He changed this. If it's zero, this should be uh, true. If it's not, it should be false. So. You, you know, normally I would build an if condition, like if this is equal to zero, then otherwise. But look at this. He did actually this in Excel, and I said, does it work in Power BI? If you say this equals zero, it becomes a true or false without doing anything else. How cool is that? Okay, so now that we have, now we have identified which periods we need to discount minus one, because they are still on time. In here, it's still on time, but here they are counting one period too much. So uh, what he does is transforms these to uh, one or minus one. If you remember the video, Dax Friday's video last Friday, I'll show you a cool trick where int converts true and false to zero and one. And that's, here it does exactly the same thing. So if it is true, is one, you see? True, true, true. So it's doing exactly what we want, which is super cool. And we need to now subtract. This should be, instead of one, it should be minus one, because we need to subtract this minus this. So we go in here, we put a minus in the front, and now we know which periods are, you know, every 15 interval, every 15 interval. So it is 15, 30, 45, 0, 0. And then if we subtract these by these, we're going to get the correct number. Let me show you. So we're going to create a new measure and then we're going to get a correct interval. Again, you can do this in one big measure, huh? but you're just doing this so you can actually see with your eyes. And we're going to get 15 minutes interval plus uh, is 15 minutes interval. And now let's look at this. Are you late? No. Are you late? No. Are you late? Yes, by one period. Yes, by one period. No, two, one. 
Otherwise, here is wrong. It's two. It's one. Two, two, two. And now that we have these, we just multiply by the fee, which is two dollars. And we format it as now because this is Excel is fun. Let's put the dollar sign in there and we are good to go. How good is this trick? I thought it was fantastic. And he's using a lot of DAX functions, a lot of tricks. So I, I had a lot of fun doing it. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed the new functions. If you know any other useful trick or example for quotients just let me know because i i still a little bit skeptical about that anyhow enjoy your friday enjoy your week and it's absolutely wonderful weather in sweden so i'm going to i don't know stop talking uh, have a great weekend and i'll see you again on monday bye